so subscribe to the show. <laughs> That's my bit. That's what I got to do. So <laughs> if you want to see the bloopers, if you want to uh, ask questions, live chat uh, during the YouTube portion, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the show. There's a little button somewhere. Where is it, Brian? Where's the button on the YouTube? Uh, it's on the right, kind of like yeah. down here. It's somewhere in there. Right if you here. use YouTube a lot, yeah. which I obviously don't, you'll know where yeah. it is. On to you, Frederick. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so with that being said, without any further ado, let's go ahead and welcome our guest. We have Campus Director at Suncoast Developers Guild, Catherine Tremel. Welcome to the show, Catherine. Hey, Trammel. You? Trammel. Well, Trammel. yourself. Trammel. I know, right? I'm looking for an A and I'm saying an E. What the heck? Um, Catherine, what is going on with you? And why do people say that? I'm sure it's not just me. <laughs> Uh, no, you're the only one that screwed up my last name so far. <laughs> Probably. Probably. <laughs> Thank you for that distinction, um, Catherine. I appreciate it. Well, you know, it makes you special in my heart. <laughs> special in your heart. I'll take that. I'm going to drink to that. I like being special. Yeah. So, Catherine, you're joining us from St. Pete, right? You were, yes. you were a St. Pete native, or are you from St. Pete or from somewhere else? No, I am uh, actually a Michigander. So I uh, came down to St. Pete about five years ago. So hmm. trying to escape the snow and coming down to the sunny weather. Oh, okay. Not a fan of the snows. Oh, no. No. Our last year, we had probably about a foot every time it snowed. And that was like, hell no to the snow. So getting out of there. Oh, that was a cute <laughs> little run you just did there. That's I cute. like that. You should wrap. <laughs> Yo. Yep. Ryan and I are both big fans of the snow. I don't know about Sarah. What about you, Sarah? Mm, I like to visit it. And then leave. Yeah. I yeah, grew up in Boston, cool. so I don't need to know. Mm -mm. Yeah. Don't need it. I think so I just need to be up there long enough so that mm -hmm. my bones like solidify into ice and then I can come back to Florida. I just want to freeze. I just want to be cold forever. It's just wonderful. I'm a yeah. brick oven, so I need the cold. Yeah, no, that's so, weird. I know. <laughs> well, <laughs> refer back to about what, three minutes at the beginning of the show for context of the weird. Wait, what? Like you know, why I came down? Thing. Sorry? Wait, oh the whole name thing? But you're mm -hmm. how you're the only one that messed it up. Mm -hmm. Um well actually in Michigan, uh I'm people when you hear my last name, they ask me if I'm related to Alan Trammell, the old Tigers baseball player. So that's pretty much why are, they never showed it up. No. No. Oh, so why do you deny it? Yeah. Why do I deny it? Um, <laughs> just, just admit that you are okay. Well, down here, no, let's yeah. drop that bomb. <laughs> down here, nobody would know the difference. Probably in Michigan, they would pick up on it pretty quickly. Brian, you were at sports ball. Do you know who this baseball player is? I have uh, no, no, I'm not that. I'm basketball, sports ball, not uh, not uh, basketball. Okay, baseball, yeah, I, sports ball. Sarah, you? No ball, sports ball. That's where I'm at <laughs> on that one. Yeah, I so. don't know human sports ball. <laughs> So you uh, uh, you took school at um, at the Iron Yard and you you went you you took the online at the at the Phoenix right, um, so you had business business administration and e business at Phoenix right. Yes. Uh, okay, a, and then uh, BS sorry? certificate. It's a BS degree in uh, BS. So lots of BS. <laughs> yeah. Lots of BS. Lots of BS. I, I see a whole how, theme how of much, this show. How much BS? <laughs> so much BS. A lot. <laughs> So then you took front end engineering at the Iron Yard. Is that correct? Yep. What was that, that jump? Was... Why, why from BS to front end? Um, well, I had done some project coordination uh, work uh, as part of my career. And I had worked on redeveloping a website with a lighting company up in Michigan. And the developers let me kind of in on what they did. And I thought it was interesting, but never really, we didn't have an Iron Yard up in Detroit at the time. Uh, so I didn't really have a path. And when we moved down to St. Pete, I was kind of able to start to decide if I want a new career or if I want to stick to the same old being an executive assistant project coordinator. And it was kind of like, what the hell? I've wasted money on stupider things. So give it a shot. So this is true. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should probably tell people what the Iron Yard uh, was. Uh, it's, it's, it was basically a cold school kind of, right? Yeah, it was a, yeah, a nationwide code school. They had about 15 campuses before they shut down. And uh, they're very similar to what I do now, but of course we've improved it. Much, much improved. Yes. I can attest yeah. to that. Yep. 
but yeah, so they taught web development either front end or back end. Uh, and of course, I went in with front end languages for HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, React, uh, and old school like, uh, oh God, what were you using? Uh, Backbone and Backbone, Underscore. yeah. Backbone yes. JS. Yes. Yes. Backbone, yeah. Firebase, and React. Yeah. So the trifecta. Yeah. Yeah. People love Backbone. So what happened then? We uh, we burned and out of the ashes like a phoenix on Harry Potter woo came Suncoast, right? Yeah. Um, so it took about nine months after the Iron Yard closed. And uh, luckily, we had our team that was with the Iron Yard uh, campus here loved what we did. And the community loved us. And we wanted to kind of bring it back up. So some of our team members worked really hard and got us licensed by the state under Suncoast Developers Guild. So we opened that school July of 2018 and we've been going great since then. So we are also a code school. We're a full-time immersive program. So we teach full stack development. Uh, so we have uh, about four cohorts a year right now. So it's a 12 week program. Yeah, and they have all sorts of awesome uh, community like connections too. I, 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 the Figma meetup that I host is there they provide the space which is incredible including like the equipment to project and you know uh, uh this little stand thing that i tried to break sorry about that <laughs> he tries and, he tries to break something every time <laughs> I, I feel like i do yeah yeah and there's even there's, there's, we, there's a podcast one that's there as well that i want to go to and wordpress and yeah we and have a, probably we have a youtube better. group saint pete business builders we have the podcasters we've got wordpress um we've got some other uh ones we've got figma of course once a month and we've got uh android group joins us uh so does the uh google developers guild so we have some great groups that come in and kind of share the knowledge and we love to host them so it's a cool space too in terms of like having having meetups and stuff there's plenty of plenty of room and and uh like you said there's really great equipment but right there in saint pete like where you're located is is you know in that nice what central avenue uh, yeah grants mm -hmm. we're in, in grand central so we're right at 22nd and central so we've got great food great breweries nearby mm -hmm. and so yeah it's a great space we have space we love it there yeah, if you have what a meetup, though, you have to bring your cupcakes. So that's that's a it's a rule. I don't know how many people know that, but yeah. Ooh, cupcakes. Well, my other is Mountain Dew. You're allowed to bribe me with. Oh Mountain yeah, Mountain Dew. Dew. Also. Yeah, that's Mountain true. Dew. Mountain Dew cupcakes. Yes. I thought well, it was no, Diet not Coke. the same together. It has to be one no. or the other. Oh no, I drink <laughs> oh. Diet Coke too. Oh, I was but, gonna say, I'm like, what what has changed since the last time? The we vices saw? are all there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but on a 12 hour shift, a Mountain Dew comes in very handy. So hear that so who is suncoast for what, what what kind of person is going here what what if i have aspirations to be a web developer or ux or who is it for completely yeah it's uh majority of our folks are career changers so they're kind of i think our average age is around 35 so folks that have been out in the fields uh tried a career for a few years they couldn't find anything they liked or they got bored or they found out, unfortunately, during times like this that they get laid off and they just don't have a chance to really jump into a new opportunity. Um, so we're very, very much there for them. But we've had some great uh, students who come straight out of high school that they know exactly what they want to do and they know college isn't right for them. So they kind of come to us and get that kickstart and they can go off and with after 12 weeks, they have enough knowledge to kind of get started and learn and grow. And that's really what we're here for is for anyone to find their own path and we're there to support that path. That's so cool. Yeah, so we've got the old people like me and Sarah who went through the iron yard and then we've got the young folks. So, so yeah. Old. <laughs> but yeah, if they really want to- <laughs> Yeah, we're really old. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, what, can you speak up? <laughs> <laughs> There's our sound clip for the show. So, <laughs> Catherine, what can people do now in the current environment? Do you, does Sunco still have opportunities? Obviously, they can't be there. Is there in a virtual mm, kind of session yeah. that I could attend if I want? Yeah, well, we actually, um, I'm working on getting some uh, part, we have a part-time class that's going on Saturdays. It just started this last one. So they're actually using Zoom and Slack for a virtual class. And it's kind of like an intro to web development. 
Uh, we're working on getting some crash courses for free events uh, online. I just have to talk to my speakers. And um, we actually have a class that's starting May 11th that if we can't come back to our campus because we're virtual right now uh, with our current students that we're gonna start that class online. And then once we're allowed to open our campus back up, bring them back home and back on campus. So we're definitely not slowing down. We're keeping things going because we know opportunity when it knocks for someone, we wanna be there and have that opportunity open to them. So we're trying to keep things rolling and keep it right on track. Speaking of opportunities, do you have any kind of, sorry, Brian, do, do you have any, I just want to ask because this deals with what Catherine just said. Do, do you have any kind of um, special discounts or anything for people right now, considering what's going on with people being uh, such a high unemployment rate right now? Is there any kind of discount or, or anything people could, um, could take advantage of that, that you yeah. might have for COVID? Uh, well, right now we we always have our diversity scholarship, which will actually take $1,900 off the program. Um, so that's a great opportunity for them to apply to uh, the tuition. We're actually also starting, uh, we had, don't have it ready yet, um, but we're hoping sometime mid-May to be able to roll out a HEROES uh, program. So if you're, say, a family member or a actual like firefighter, policemen, mm. even teachers, like somewhere along along those lines that you'll have that opportunity. So we're working on that for the future. Um, so once we can roll that out, it'll be up on our website and be open for everyone. I'm curious, um, are you going to be, since you're going to have to ha kind of get people into this new, you know, learning this whole new thing for, for most of them, right? They're switching careers or they're just out of high school. Um, I've worked remote for like five years and, and this for me right now, I mean, this mm. is what I do every day. It's obviously different under these circumstances, everyone's stressed out and, and whatever, but, um, but I already know kind of the, whatever. <laughs> well, you know well, what I mean, whatever, like, you know. and whatever, everyone's feeling different feelings about it, but, um, <laughs> but I already have like a, a system and a setup and, and I have some best practices that I go to in terms of remote work. I was just curious if, if you're going to kind of talk about that when you start this and kind of, uh, get them acclimated and how to succeed um, in this type of environment uh, versus, you know, being in the classroom where you kind of have that interaction and that, that different feeling. Yeah, well, actually, probably our very, our first week of class is going to be a real change. Like, we're going to have to turn it up where normally I'm giving speak talks in the morning about uh, things like soft skills, like time management and things like that. We're going to be doing more about tips and tricks, how to keep them active, how to keep them going. We have a handbook that the students can access to kind of give them tools and how to stay in communication with us. Um, we use Slack a lot. So we'll definitely dive into like, how do you make sure that you're communicating with your team well, because now your team are your, your peers and your instructors. Um, and you just really making sure that they have a lot of time on Zoom with us so that they have can ask those questions and really kind of get used to that feeling of, you know, I have to still maintain my own time and I have to make sure that I'm communicating and really just being a part of the program because you can't slack off, especially once we went online, it was very much, uh, you got, you kind of hit that wall really quick of, oh crap, like, yeah, I was able to walk to them before and now I have to either get in queue or join a call and kind of, even with talking to their peers, how do they get them onto a hangout or onto a Slack communication uh, to kind of keep that going. So yeah, it's gonna be a big a big change for us if we have to roll it out that way with this class. But luckily we have this group that's already going through it and we kind of see their, their trials and where they kind of needed more help and we kind of can make a game plan for it. That's awesome. could, could it be an opportunity for um, in the future if there are people that maybe can't attend? Do you think that it could transition to something that once you open up that maybe there'll be an online group that could join too? Yeah, it's definitely opened our eyes to it. Um, we have we are licensed by the state of Florida, so we'll have to apply for a separate license to allow online mm -hmm. learning. Um, but that's already in our kind of, we see we can do it. And how do we make this offer? So it may be someone who's in um, Fort Lauderdale wants to attend our school, but they can't come to us. Is there an option yeah. where they can do it long distance? And so we're really looking into those. It's making us kind of go, oh, yeah, we, we wanted to do this before, but now we're like, yeah, we could actually do this. Or if I don't want to leave my house. Well, we might you drag you out of your house. <laughs> you, Brian should always stay in his house, COVID or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, he's got to deliver cupcakes to me once a month. Oh, so he's got to come out. 
Yeah, yeah, I guess you, so. You, we'll you've let him out for that. Missing out lately, yeah. That and the Coke oh, yeah. or, or Mountain Dew. Let me ask you a question about, say, someone is uh, in, like you said earlier, Catherine, a, a, their, it's their second career that they're looking at. Two part question. Number one, bottom line, uh, I'm you know I'm a bartender. I'm looking to do this. How much does it cost? Part two of the question: How much do you think I can make coming out of this? Uh, my first, second year of uh, getting past the, the, the courses. Okay. Well, the cost, the tuition is $14,900. Uh, like I said, we have that diversity scholarship that folks can take a look at and see if they, they want to apply for it. So that'll bring it down to help them out. Um, for as far as salaries, I right out the door, I've seen folks go anywhere from as low as 37 up to in the 60s depending on what type of skill and the type of talent they, they can show. Uh, the average right now is about 53. So if you take all of our students and kind of take a look at the numbers, that's kind of where it's falling. And for a lot of these folks that are coming out of like baristas, I mean, even me coming down from Michigan doing my career change, I saw a large increase in my pay. So it made it worth it for me. Plus having that ability to kind of have a career that I enjoyed um, really made a difference. Do you see that just in Florida or is that when you're, when you're talking about those averages of like 35 to 60, is that uh, within the United States or is that within just, you know, Florida within my first two years? Yeah, that's uh, just coming out for the local Tampa Bay area. If you're starting to expand out, you're going to get into the areas where you're getting more like Chicago, New York, uh, of course, California are going to have higher numbers because of the expectations out there. But for the Tampa Bay area, that's exactly what you can expect. Yeah, that's, that's pretty great. standard for entry level too. So that, I mean, that's, that's great. Yeah, and we always tell our folks, like even if the salary is lower than you expected, but you have to balance out, do they offer maybe work from home days or do they have amazing benefits or something else that you need more than like, because everyone has their own kind of scale of what's important for them, so. There's some great companies out there that have some great different types of benefits that really come in handy for folks. Well, let me turn that question on to Sarah really quick or, or Brian, but Sarah, how much do you think if someone would make that you might hire as a junior coming out of a program like this? Because um, you're at a California-based company. Is that a Cali fair question? Yeah, it, it gets tricky. So working remote, I mean, I've worked where there's a differential depending on where you are. So um, they base it on where you're actually located, not where the company's located. So if that were the case, then it would be what we, in that range because we, we're talking about Florida. Um, but for a California company, junior level, um, talking about front end development, mm -hmm. you know, 100, 110, somewhere in there. Um, it's probably about, about starting, which, but you've got to remember that's, that's tough. It's tough to make a go of it in, in San Francisco or in the Bay area, um, on that amount. It sounds like a lot, but it's really not. Um, it's, it's pretty low. Cost of living is that high? Cost of living is that high. Um, and a lot of people I know, um, out there live in the Oakland area and then they, they commute in, oh. um, they tend to live with roommates and things just to be able to kind of piece it together. I um, remember hearing a story on uh, bread time. If, if any of you know that podcast, where uh, one of the one of the guys was talking about how he lived in Tampa, but he really wanted to have uh, like that high paying UX job. So at the time he got a Google phone number with a San Francisco San Francisco area code, and he changed his address of his website, his like, living address to a San Francisco address, and then starting up applying for jobs in San Francisco. And he got something in two weeks and he was like, okay, well, I guess I'm moving. And that was his success story. Yeah. Um, I wish I could find a link to that and say, oh, I'll put it in the show notes, but I probably won't, but you should just listen to bread time anyway, because it's a great show. That's um, an old, old trick though. Like when I was a career advisor, many, many, many moons ago. Uh, so old, so old, so old, but as a career advisor to, to photographers, <laughs> graphic designers and web developers, um, that was part of the advice that we would always give them is if you're looking to relocate, you need to make sure that you get a, an area code that's in that area and that you, you either you have a PO box, or you have a relative or you have somebody um, because the bias when you're looking at candidates is, is one, uh, is somebody going to relocate five states over to, to take this job or am I going to go with a person that's already here? 
Um, and I tell the same thing to people that are in the Bay Area. If people from Tampa don't want to go to St. Pete and vice mm-hmm. versa. Keep your address off of your resume. Yep. Um, don't don't put it on there because people, it's crazy, but people are like, ah, I don't think they're going to want to make that drive over the bridge every day. They don't bother asking you. They just make the assumption. So it's yeah. quite a drive. I don't know. I don't make it. So. <laughs> well, yeah, who, no, who knows it, what some of these HR people think? Not not to be yeah. negative against HR people, but I'm just saying they don't have the same. Um, they're not thinking the same way about the job as somebody within the, the industry or somebody within that realm of front end development thinks about it, yeah. or what they would do to commit to that job. Yeah, but that that's actually a great tip. That's something that I tell even my students. Like, you know, don't put your exact address because you don't want to take a chance of them looking up to see how long your commute would be like just give them a general area because you don't want to take a chance of someone making that decision for you yep. so united states <laughs> oh okay well about three minutes to get here speaking of your students Catherine, tell us a little bit about what your role is what's your title again just to state it again for the show and then what what's your day-to-day what do you actually do Um, Well, my title is campus director. Um, My unofficial duties are I herd cats. Um, Basically, it is my job to get the campus up and running. So I handle everything on the student side, as far as coordinating their soft skills, their field trips, their guest speakers. Um, I work along with our enrollment specialist when we have uh, prospective students coming in. I work with our CEO for working with the companies that we're trying to get to hire, the companies that we want our advisory committee I reach out and harass people like Brian and ask them for their advice the and time. feedback if they interviewed our students, kind of <clears throat> things that they can improve on. Uh, I'm really there to kind of keep the team coordinated and the campus running. Uh, I work with the events. So every time we have a meetup or some other event, I'm there to coordinate for them. Uh, majority of the time, I'm actually on campus to make sure it goes smoothly. Uh, so I wear many hats. Um, there's probably even things that I don't think of right now that later on I'll go oh I forgot to mention that uh but that's pretty typical for me and and which which is your has been your favorite student my favorite I don't name favorites they're my (laughs) children did you say Jeff Jeff right (laughs) no every student that comes through uh they become my kid whether they're younger than me older than me the same age uh I start looking after them and their well-being so no, I definitely, I don't play favorites, but there are some that you want to strangle more than others. And if they watch this, they know who they are. Uh, so when but, we go yeah. off air, you tell us, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you like promise never to speak of it again, unless like I can like- Have you pronounced that name in the chat that you just wrote? <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, we had some, we have great students that come through. So I usually love them all. And even the ones that I want to strangle by the end of 12 weeks, you're like, you know, you weren't so bad. There's going to be another one the next class that will probably drive me even crazier. So they're great. (laughs) Speaking of your students, can you tell us of any success stories? Like so-and-so came in and blah, 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 and they did X and now they're doing Y and wow. Yeah. Oh, we have so many of them. Um, Probably more of our recent ones. Uh, Dawn is a great example. Uh, She came in, she was a massage therapist. And she actually followed, she's one of our family members that have come through. We've got a couple where we're accumulating families and her brother-in-law started and then her husband at the iron yard, then her husband came through Suncoast and then she followed his footsteps Mm. and uh, she went from massage therapist and now she's a developer at Soma Global and working with on great projects to help like the police and the fire and things like that. So she's doing some amazing things and uh, we have some folks that have gone through and done their own like pool business. Uh, Dylan's another example. He ran his own pool company because he wanted to be his own boss and then realized he didn't want to clean pools forever. And now he's at Banco ZK and he's just kicking butt. Uh, So yeah, we have some amazing folks and almost every background you could think of that have come through our program and kind of really changed their lives. So yeah. Trying to think of some more examples, but there's a few more that have gone to Banco's. Banco's EK is snatching them up. I'm just warning you right now. So if any companies are listening, uh, I, they've been really great supporters of us, and they they seem to really 
find the folks that they want and they go for them. So, but no, that's, it's fun. It's great watching them kind of change. And I remember going and hating my job and not wanting to go in every day. And then, then going through the school and, you know, we're not an easy program. We don't make it easy. We stress people out like crazy. We really test them and push them and make them learn on their own in some ways, uh, stress them out. But by the time they come out, oh yes. If, if we don't have someone cry, it's not a good semester or good cohort, but no, um, but they really, they transform and they learn so much about themselves and what they can do. It's, it's so much fun. I mean, I love it. It's not just because I get to torture them on a regular basis. Wow. The, the evil look in her eyes when she yeah. said that. It was like well, a it's because I looked up yeah. at Sarah's face. <laughs> I, was I think just she was agreeing. <laughs> I was just thinking about, about us going through it as the Iron Yard, which now seems like forever ago, yeah. uh, but it really wasn't that long ago. So five long. years. It was only only five years. Like, that's five crazy. Years. And I remember being like... Horses. I, ho- did you say horses? <laughs> what the hell does it have to do with anything? These people are weird. <laughs> I don't even know that. They're weird. I, I, I knew that. Yeah. But yeah, just look at Amira. <sighs> Amira. He sounded like he's from Boston. Go look at Amira. I'm from Jersey. Go look at Amira. <laughs> Go look yeah, at Amira. crazy. <laughs> but I remember for me going into the uh, into the iron yard, uh, I was working two jobs. Um, one teaching online um, web web design and web development, believe it or not. Uh, but most of the HTML, the CSS side, um, and the UX stuff. And then I was also creative director for a sign company. And that was all just like administering e-commerce and building um, graphics for McDonald's. And my whole goal with going to the Iron Yard was I want to be able to make, to work one job and make the amount of money I make working too. Uh, That was my sole purpose. I was like, that's it. If I can do that, I'll be happy. Dude, uh, I didn't know you went through the Iron Yard. That's amazing. How, yeah. How, what? And she did all of this too, but while she's walking uphill in the snow on her, and she held her computer. One no, but I oh was, I, I was working both of those jobs at the same time. Yeah. At the Iron Yard. She, she's still my example when people come in for an interview and go, so can I work during this? And I'm like, you could try, but you'll end up like this person. Oh, God, oh my God, yeah. you're the worst. You're there's the actually, worst. Yeah, there's actually a photo on the wall that she points to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it the one? Is, like, is it the one where I'm through it? <laughs> is it the one where I'm flipping Catherine off? Because that's my favorite one. That's my favorite. <laughs> oh, it's good. I've seen that one. It's so good. Sarah, let that's me ask you something really quick. You too. <laughs> Sarah, how long did it take you to find success after the Iron Yard? When did you feel like, like you said, like you were able to do this with one job? Uh, I am not uh, the typical. I think. Um, I, I obviously I had a background in. Um, so my, my bachelor's degree is computer animation. So I've been using the Adobe Creative Suite since the dawn of the dinosaurs. Um, I have a lot of experience um, in design and in development. So going to the Iron Yard for me was about upping my skills um, and making sure that I was aware of how teams today were building websites and, and um, really, I think I just took the Iron Yard uh, program to realize that I hate JavaScript. I'm pretty convinced that was my sole purpose um, because by the end, I really hated JavaScript. Um, but I was actually, I found a job at Demo Day. Um, but I met with a company that day, had an interview. I had two interviews with two companies and within two weeks I had a job and I was, was able to quit my other two jobs. So, well, nice. my other one job, I actually still work for the sign company, but that's a long story. <laughs> She doesn't know how to work for just one company, so really, she'll never have one job. That's true. That's true. I realized that. Uh, yeah, I. I She's got always... too much energy. That's why she has energy. all those animals and horses and dogs and all that. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's true. I have a new one, Catherine. You haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I'll tell you about it later. Anyway, moving on. What do you do well, for speaking fun, of animals? Catherine? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, what no. do I do for fun? Um, yes. Well, I, well, Sarah knows that I put together Legos. Uh, so it's something that my husband and I both love to do. So he's got the whole Star Wars set and I have the creator buildings. So they're like this big and you put them together with multiple floors and the buildings connect. Uh, so I do all of that. Are you a crazy um, glue person? 
no, no, not yet. Uh, even though when we moved in this house and the movers managed to smash them all while they're inside boxes, uh, that oh. I came this close. Uh, and so I rebuilt them all, uh, which is harder to do when you're trying not to take them totally apart. I learned that trick, but uh, no, I do that as kind of a stress reliever because I like building things. Um, I like photography, so I'll go out to the park and walk really slow, and which would probably drive Sarah crazy. She would never be able to walk that slow, but I yeah. like taking pictures mm -hmm. of nature and animals, and it's kind of my zen. Uh, so yeah, those are probably the main two things. Um, I'm a crazy dog mom. So I have a Shih Tzu who's 11 and a Schnoodle, which is a Schnauzer Poodle, uh, who we adopted in November. And uh, so I'm one of those crazy people that have an Instagram account for their dog. And uh, I keep that active more than I do my page or even our Suncoast page. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so those are kind of my main hobbies. I'm a little weird in my own ways. She's very weird, not a little. Very weird. Oh. Everyone's I, weird here. Okay. Again, well, want to talk, Sarah. Yeah. I like, hey, weird. you know. <laughs> I've, I've been Sarah's friend for five years now. So, yeah, how I've did you deal with that? Oh, it's Are a you challenge. You okay? Jeez, Frederick. It's, it's a challenge. You've met her. No. <laughs> no, it's wrong. No, we're, it's funny because we're kind of opposites in so many ways that we, we meld very well together. Um, but yet in some ways we're very similar. So it's almost scary when we're together. Uh, yeah. Just the things that we could get into. Um, yeah. No, it's like one brain. Yeah. Two, one brain, two different people. It's very strange. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a really weird, uh, weird it's thing. Like, it's like one brain, two different brains and two different people. No, no, it's, it's weird. Like I said, like when, when, I, I can, like, there's been times where I haven't seen Catherine for like six, eight, nine months because we live so far apart. I'm way up in Pasco County. Why not 12 and, months? Well, I don't know. Have we gone that long? I don't, seen I, don't, I don't think we've gone that long. Let's give it a different long. number. But, <laughs> I know what I did. <laughs> shut up. So anyway, but seriously, we get together and immediately it's like, we just like, I, I don't know. I, I can't explain it, but all of a sudden, all the things that I usually can do for myself, I no longer do, and Catherine does it, and she becomes yeah. my like, walking, talking assistant, as we, you know, and we work together, too, so we actually, yeah. I was her boss for a little while, um, so we have this kind of strange, like, mind melt thing that happens. Oh my so, god, yeah. Catherine, tell me about that uh, horrific state of, uh, in your life, that, that, that year or two, where you were like, oh my god. Oh, well, you know, I really learned how to deal with a pain in the ass boss. No, that actually, it was really fun because coming straight out of the iron yard, um, I went to work at the same place with Sarah and being my manager, like I learned a lot from her because she gave me a lot of those things that the program couldn't give me. Uh, so it actually worked out really well. Um, besides the fact that I learned how to keep her calendar and even without being around her, know what she's supposed to be doing. Seriously. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And like she, she talked to me, well, she dragged me into being uh, one of the co, was it co-leader, co-director for women who code with her. Yes. Um, so like it gave, opened up opportunities for me to meet great people and kind of get to know them. So she made me kind of take my introvert self and kicked it out into the public and made it a little yeah. bit easier for me, which I think is one reason why I like doing my job now so much is because I can help make those connections to people with those friends that they didn't think they were going to make because I totally thought yeah. she hated me on the first day of class and uh it took us a while oh, to man. realize yeah I've told you that story before yeah. you know no, she I gives off that vibe uh, it's now uh, the French events. I have, <laughs> my eyebrows are too close to my eyes so I look angry what? it's not my fault did you yeah, hear that no thing. yeah did it's you hear yourself thing. say that you know what it's a thing <laughs> we <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, Sarah, the Sarah episode maybe, ever. Sarah, the weirdest episode ever. That's the sign. I just want to say, <laughs> Sarah is a great friend. No matter what's going on, if she's not feeling well, uh, if she's having a bad day, she'll still pause and talk to you. So we can we can rag on her all we want, but she's like a good. Yeah, friend. we're obviously just kidding. Yeah. Well, this is true. This is true. Seriously, yeah. she survived she twelve weeks sitting too. next to me. Yeah. <laughs> She wrote yeah, a book? You mean this book, Brian? Oh my god. I hate this. This book is called no, Building Design Systems with Sarah Veselov. Oh no! <laughs> yes. 
So let me ask you, Catherine, does yours have a sign? Is yours signed as well? Because mine has a to Frederick with love, Sarah Veselov, XOXO. Does yours have that? Not yet. I have to still see her. What a good friend she is, huh? Well, I'm going to put this back on my bookshelf over here, right about right there. I have a feeling she's going to have to practice drawing hands so that she can make one holding up the middle finger to be able to sign mine appropriately. I think so. I think so. Sounds about right. I never signed my mother's. My mother was really upset about it. As she should be. How, how I would do you be... do your mother that way? Yeah. You've, you've met my I would mother. Be devastated. <laughs> she has met my mother. There is no other way to handle my mother. No, you, you told us about your mother. I'm just joking. <laughs> she loves her mom very much. I do. I do. And her mom's oh, adorable, yeah. but she's In... definitely not Sarah. Yeah. No. <laughs> definitely not. No. She called me yesterday to sing happy anniversary to you. And Dan and I were in the middle of trying to watch episode five of Tiger King. And I was like, enough. I'm like, Ma, what are you doing? <laughs> Happy anniversary. I'm like, oh, who does that? Like, who Your does mom. That? Yeah, she does. Mm-hmm. So what do you think? Do you think who, who's guilty on that show? Is it Joe Exotic? Oh, who's sh- guilty? Don't who- tell me I didn't get to watch it yet. Uh, hold on, hold on. It I have doesn't finished. matter. They're all guilty. I, <laughs> that That's the right answer. This is true. But... The, the crazy thing, I was reading that story about Dade City Animal Zoo or Wild Things, the zoo yeah. that's right next to my house that got shut down. Oh and yeah, they had tell a, us about that. So I live in, in uh, Pasco County, which is for anyone who's not in Florida and is watching this, it, that is the county above Hillsborough where Tampa is. So I'm like halfway between Orlando and Tampa. Um, Dade City is like this old agricultural community. There's lots of um, cows and farms. I live on a five acre property with horses and stuff. So I live on this dirt road. At the end of my dirt road, there is a place called (laughs) Dade City Wild Things. It has this giant giraffe head like on the corner. And it's it's this crazy looking place. Um, And when I first moved in, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, I have to check that out. Well, I went online and I looked at it and what they were, what they do is cub encounters. So people can go in and pet cubs swim in the pool with a tiger cub um, and some other random animals, but their big thing was, was tiger cubs. And so when I moved in here, they had a sign outside their front door. It was written, I mean, it looked like serial killer handwriting and it said PETA, PETA kills um, because they were in this big battle with PETA. PETA finally won this week. Um, so they, uh, Dade City uh, Wild Things is no longer allowed to have any exotic animals. Um, they, they came with trucks on Monday and took them all away. Um, I almost wanted to get out and just like clap because day after day- Where did they day, go? They went to animal rescue um, facilities. So across the United States, I know there's uh, like 12 of big, the tigers. Big cast? No, no, not there, uh, out in uh, Colorado. But the whole thing is, so, you know, there's this whole thing about Tiger King and, you know, since we're stuck inside, I started watching it with my husband and I saw, we saw the trucks coming to get, we figured something was going down. So I looked up, I was like, hey, what's going on there? And I looked it up online and there was this whole article with a quote from Joe Maldonado about how that Dade City had sent them 19 malnourished tigers. Um, and then he actually talks about it in the um, series. So it was just one of those like weird things like, oh my God, like this really wow. is Florida. And I'm in the middle of this like bizarre you live next to it. triangle thing. It's crazy. They're like, they wheel out this weird um, like wheelbarrow with a fake cage on top and a, and a stuffed tiger inside every morning to like advertise their tours. Yeah, it was creepy. It's a weird Enticing. Thing. Yeah, you, yeah. You you must have only taken me the back way to your house because I've you, never seen that. Are you sure? Yeah. Because right across the street is the pig that lives under the trampoline. I swear I showed no. you that. Oh, no. I live in a really weird place. Did you say a pig that lives under a trampoline? <laughs> yes. Yes. Perfectly normal, Frederick. It's just we've, a pig. No, no, sorry. We've, 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 no questions. We've, no judgment. Yeah. No judgment. Don't because we don't have enough time to explain all of that. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> It's an episode. So think about that. Those places, they don't actually the send trampoline. those animals back to somewhere like India or wherever they're from. Uh, uh, you know, like like they don't. They never talk well. about like sending these tigers to uh, their natural habitat. It's always just about cub petting or things of that nature. Yeah. Well, they can't. I mean, they'd just be sending them there to 
die anyway. So, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not so. saying. Well, there's a lot of natural reserves in, in a lot of places. You yeah, know? and they're not, they're usually poached in a lot of the countries, unfortunately. So there'll be hunters and people that are. Well, it, it's not like it's every place is like riddled with poachers. There are safe places, somewhat safe. A lot better no, than living in a so cage until you die. You're naive. Same. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you, Brian. Hinton. <laughs> Uh, yeah but there's a ton of places that are really again a better alternative than living in a cage for 10 years mm, and dying yeah. it's, it's 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 fucked up yeah it's i would kind of like just, how we are right now <laughs> kind yes. of yeah yeah i mean if you think about it like uh, i don't know i read something today people are like you know now i know why my dog is so excited to go for a walk like holy shit yeah like I'm just, I get up in the morning and I'm like, oh, we're going to go for a walk. And then we get in the car and we go to the shop and we sit there all day and then we come home and I'm like, oh, I can't wait tomorrow when I get up and go for a walk. <laughs> it's like the only exciting thing I do. <laughs> yeah. A friend of mine was telling me how they, when they go to Target and they get to drive to Target, it's like, it's like Disney. It's like going to Disney or going to vacation because they're actually, they're, you know, it's a rare treat <laughs> going to Target. Oh, yeah. Catherine, you're our guest. What's what's it like for yeah. you? What what's your yeah. what's your situation like? Are you holding up okay? Yeah, no, I'm very lucky. I live in a, a neighborhood where it's very walkable, so I get out and the two dogs drag me out. So I live near a park, so we go over there every day and kind of just go out. And it's it's been pretty. I've been very lucky. I'll say that for as much as I'm st I feel stuck in the house just because I'm not used to it. Um, I can, with my work schedule and everything, I can get out multiple times during the day and kind of stretch out. I take once a week, I just kind of go for a car ride. I have an appointment uh, that I go to for a one-on-one -on -one, um, and then come back home. So I can get that, oh, I drove somewhere and I've had a half a tank of gas for an entire month. Uh, so it hasn't gone down. So that's been great, but- uh, Which is a shame because yeah. it's only, you know, like a dollar seventy a gallon right now. <laughs> I know. I know. I saw it the other day. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> I felt like I was like in high school again. I mean, like that's how long it's been. It's been ages. Yeah, dude. I remember that like dollar something gas. That was amazing. I remember 97 cent gas. That's how I remember I 79. Wow, what? you guys are really old. A lot older than me. Where did, where did you live that they had 79 cent gas? Yeah. Venice, Venice, there was like one gas station that had 79. And then it went up to 88. And everyone was like, what? What year yeah. was that? Probably in sometime in the 80s. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. 81 when you were a teenager. Not that old. <laughs> 83. Sorry, am, am I missing the year? You're good, you're good, Frederick. Okay, good. <laughs> Speaking of me being good, pow, 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 it's Sarah's favorite part of the show, the lightning round. You ready? You ready to bring the lightning, Brian, and the thunder? And the I lightning? My lightning. I had to wear my lightning hat. And you, you mentioned sure I was going to, yeah, I got, a, I got a new, I got a hat for the lightning round. <laughs> See, why, I told you, why, Catherine, there it is. Why is that a lightning hat? That's what Why I asked. Why is it not a lightning? Two Why is it not a lightning, of lightning coming out? <laughs> That's not it's... lightning. Those are antlers. Use your imagination, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm it's with you, Sarah. Sake of whole wheat toast. Jesus, use your imagination. No. Mm -mm. No, think of it as, you know, like a Viking hat type thing where, you know, yeah. Thor, you know, come on. I don't think Thor's hat was fuzzy like that. <laughs> For our audio listeners, Brian is wearing an amazing hat, and I suggest you go back and watch yeah. the video. It's it's so, bright pink, uh, and it's kind of like a unicorn no, with horns on it. No, it's not. Brian, take us <laughs> off of the lightning round with your amazing, beautiful hat. Absolutely. Um, so my prepared questions that I have readily available. Uh, say you're you're in a circus, Catherine. Um, these are all for you, rather, guys, yeah, Catherine. Sorry, for you. sorry. Yeah, yeah. We didn't. We didn't. Do that. Uh, would you rather be the person with their head inside the lion's mouth or get shot out of the cannon? If I go with the cannon. All right, Sarah. Yeah. Why is it my turn? <laughs> <sighs> Sarah? Uh, oh, okay. If you could buy any any Lego set you wanted, what would it be? Good oh. question. Uh, Price doesn't matter. Well, price doesn't really, yeah. It's... Oh, look at her. She's bougie. Price doesn't matter anyway. 
No. Um, <laughs> well, no. After I bought my husband that new uh, Death Star, or no, not was it Death Star? Whatever oh, new one they came out with, this like, yeah, it was like eight hundred bucks. Yeah, no. Yeah. I'm I'm allowed to like imagine. Um, I don't know. There's an old set that's not available anymore. That's called the Green Grocer. It's actually a little grocery store that goes with my set. Um, I think I having one of those old school sets is something that I would love to have. Ooh, that would be cool. Catherine, if you weren't doing what you're doing now, what would be your second choice as a career? Oh, okay. Second choice. Um, I'd probably either be a stay-at-home dog mom. Uh, that'd be my first choice. Um, I'd run a doggy daycare uh, or like rescue type of thing. Um, if I couldn't do those, uh, I might even go into woodworking because I actually built a couple of things in our house that I, they're not very good, but like they were fun. So she's I, an I have, excellent table builder. Excellent. Cool. Well, where, you're where thinking you... Ikea tables. Yes, yeah, I'm but I'm just, I, well, I'm just saying you were amazing. It was like on an assembly line. Tiffany and where Brad, you... they managed to screw up two bookcases over the course of like 18 hours. So <laughs> lightning round, Sarah. <laughs> you don't know how to do that. Okay. No, is it my turn? Where? No, it's your no. turn. We don't mind. You to, we're moving where, faster. Too bad. Where do you not mind waiting? <laughs> where do I not mind waiting? Um, in the line for ice cream. All right, nice. sir. Oh my God. It's like yeah. every time you get to me, it's just like it's, my mind goes. Sequential, away. like we go in the, in a loop. Yeah, I so see your nuts. <laughs> uh, shit. If you could change, if you could go back in time and change a part of your life and, and, and make a different decision, would you do that or would you just accept what you've done and, and you like the way things are now? No, I think I'd accept the way things are now. Because otherwise, how would I be here right now? Yeah. Talking to y'all. Catherine, what is your favorite, favorite, favorite book that we both exactly oh have? Oh my God. Yes. What is the title? Yeah, what's I that book called? That. Building Catherine. Design Systems. Building Design Systems by yeah. Sarah Veselov. Get it today on Amazon. At this point, nice. we have to be losing audience members because of <laughs> they must think that this is just like some infomercial from me. They have no real, they cannot understand that I'm being tortured. What know. was your favorite fairy tale growing up? Uh, Cinderella. All right, Sarah? Sarah? Sake. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, if y'all had warned me, I would have sent her the questions ahead of time so she knew what she was gonna ask me. <laughs> <laughs> well, she knows what to ask. She said she was going to write questions down. I did, I forgot. It's been really, it's been a tough week. Any questions, uh, sir? I'm going for it. Uh, if you could travel anywhere in the world, obviously without a pandemic, but uh, where would it be? Australia. I've always wanted to go there. Is it? Oh, geez. No, it's your oh, turn. Bottle, jeez. Oh, is it my turn? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you, Catherine. You come home, it's late at night, it's one in the morning, it's raining, dogs and frogs. You get to the door, it, you're just like, I want to go in the house and go to sleep. You open the door, there's a ghost. What do you do? Tell him to get out of my way, I'm tired. <laughs> I agree. Excellent, I agree. Brian. What, if anything, have you regifted? Uh, some candles. They were pumpkin smelling. It's always candles. <laughs> it is, it's always candles. Sarah? Sarah? Which golden girl are you? Good uh, Betty White, Rose. whatever her name was. Rose. Rose. Thank you. I, I can't think. It. You couldn't think of the question. I can't think of the name. We just went well together. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine, ahead. what is your favorite thing about yourself, honestly? Uh, the fact people think that I'm really nice, but... Uh, Sometimes I'm not so nice. And, yeah, if, I'm deceiving. If Mars was, if Mars was livable, would you accept a one-way ticket there? No. Hmm. Sarah, what's your favorite thing about your husband? He puts up with me, and he's been married to me for twenty-one years. <laughs> Fair. What was your favorite cartoon as a kid? 
Uh, I didn't watch a lot of cartoons as a kid. Uh, I'd probably say the one I remember watching the most is Scooby-Doo. Right on. Would you rather be able to copy and paste in real life or undo? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I'd say undo because I say a lot of shit that I really shouldn't say, and it'd be nice to take some of that back. Wait a minute. You just said you wouldn't go back in time and undo stuff. Well, I wouldn't undo, like, big things, but, you know, like, saying some stuff that you would probably make fun of me for later, yeah, that'd be nice to, like, skip that. I would never make fun of you. Hmm. So, if all of us were on Scooby-Doo, who would we be? <laughs> it's your question you gotta answer it um, ryan is scooby, scooby. yes oh that was Sarah your choice is... uh, um oh god i don't know the names uh the, the dorky one, the dorky one. Scrappy, it can say scrappy do if you want what no it's the glasses thelma 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. Me? Who am I? Um, I'm gonna go and give you Fred. Fred, that makes sense. The whole name thing. Who are you? Yeah. Who are you? Uh, I'm the person that's in the mask that they uncover. Oh, oh she's yeah. the villain. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, round and roll. That was a good question and answer. Love it. Let me ask you, Catherine. What is the most influential podcast that you're currently listening to that gives you uh, inspiration, insight, what have you? Well, I mean, besides Thunder Nerds. Um, besides Thunder Nerds, that's a given. I mean, that's yeah. A given. Um, I don't really listen to too many other ones for inspiration, but I do. Uh, one podcast I like is called uh, Get Sleepy uh, because I'm very bad at sleeping. So, like, but learning how to tone myself down at night uh, has been very helpful. What, what's the address for that? Is it getsleepy.fm or? Um, I don't know. I found it through Apple uh, playlists. So, or actually no, Spotify. So I'll send it to y'all, but um, it is, it's just like the title is just get sleepy and they read you stories and teach you how to like break down your, your thoughts. And they're really nice. So nice. Put, put it in the show doc. If you get a chance, we'll put that in the show notes yeah. for everybody I'll share that with to you. listen to already there cool hat brian uh, uh what what is one fact that every time you think about it amazes you oh um, it doesn't have to be about sarah no don't don't <laughs> add to it one fact that amazes you. it's not your um, question <laughs> i'm not really a good fact person i think the probably the thing that i learned the most that amazed me is um well brian you also love penguins uh but when i, yes, I do. saw the penguin movies and see like how much they have to balance the egg to keep it on their feet to keep them warm and things like that like that amazes me like life still happens in that very cold horrible place which as you know i don't like snow uh so that always amazes me yeah, sure i had one but then i read a stupid text from frederick what does nose mean Anyway, I'm like picking my nose and I don't realize it or something. <laughs> no, do you, you asked me a question about that joke that I told you, which was, and I'll have to tell it now, what smells the same for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? The answer is the nose. Oh, yeah, that's totally uh, telling me. I had, I had like the world. I didn't say it was a great joke. You, you asked about it. I provided the answer. Your turn. Oh, I'm <laughs> I think you knows what you were going to say. No, I'm trying to, hold on. I'm trying to get it back. Give me a second. Knows. Oh my God, I hate you so much. This is the words. Uh, you're not allowed to ask questions, Catherine. I was Stop just going to point out the giant teddy bear that was in Sarah's engagement pictures that Sarah fell in love with. So <laughs> That's a beautiful teddy bear. I love that. I fell in love with the teddy bear? What, in the engagement photos? No, but you had to have a, a you saw my one of my giant teddy bears. Oh, pictures. yes, yes. No, this is true. Yes. I, well, I needed something sappy and cheesy that I would never own myself. So, perfect. <laughs> uh, God damn it, I really did have one, but you made me forget it. Um, it's my fault. I apologize profusely. I told you, don't text me while we're doing the show. It's very I didn't. That was, I texted you an hour ago. It says 824. It's 826. 
Yeah, well, you're just receiving it now, but it's actually. <laughs> I digress. I ask your question. Oh my God, Catherine. Mm-hmm. Who's your favorite friend in the world? <gasps> oh, my BFF, my best Florida friend, Sarah Veseloff. There you go. See? Perfect. I love that. That was the question. Of course she is. Well, we're right at the end of the show. Does anybody else have any questions or sh- can we start wrapping up? Oh, dear I, God, please. I, 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 <laughs> you got please jeez wow i i, I just i just have uh, uh one, one more question if a child refuses to sleep during nap time are they guilty of resisting a rest oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah that's right i would want to drink after that one that was okay, just... joke. amen let's drink cheers oh my god Catherine. How can people get in touch with you? How can they find out more about you? What's your, you have a website, you have a Twitter handle that you would like to uh, announce. How, how do we find out more about you? Um, probably best way is uh, publicly Twitter, um, which is, I think I'm ktrammel95. Uh, y'all should know you tagged me a couple times. So hopefully mm-hmm. people can find it through yours. Um, otherwise really reaching out to me through the Suncoast webpage. If you want to know anything about our program, um, we have a option where you can click right on there and chat with us. So I'm on there usually, but yeah, usually Twitter, um, Instagram, I, I'm on there. I think I'm also key trammel 95. Uh, otherwise you can go to my dog's Instagram where I am more often. Uh, that's gizzy underscore shih tzu. Uh, but yeah, then that's pretty much where I live. Love that. How are we friends? And- like, how are we friends? I just don't uh, understand. <laughs> Come on. Gizzy I know there's a soft spot in there. Oh, oh she's, Gizzy Wiz. She's so soft. It's yeah. very deep down though. No. Yeah, there, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a warm heart in there. I mean, yeah, it's probably like you've really got to, but I, I digress again. Catherine, I uh, want to give you an opportunity, any parting words of wisdom that you would like to bestow upon the audience? Yeah, um, I think some a lesson I learned in life is don't be afraid to follow your dreams. Um, your path is your path. And whether you're 18, you're 56 or 900 years old, like if you want to go that direction, change your life and do it. Don't, don't let someone else tell you not to. I love that. Excellent. Anybody else have anything? Just thanks for joining us on the show and appreciate you taking you know, the time to spend your night with us. Well, it's been fun. So otherwise I'd be walking the dogs. I think Catherine, you and I need to do a podcast where, where we just make fun of Brian and Frederick for like an hour. Oh my God, that's a great idea. That would be amazing. Can I be your first guest? It would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should do it. I'd love that. <laughs> Remember when we were talking about this, if you and I had a podcast, it wouldn't be able to go live and no one could watch it because you'd get in trouble. So yeah, this is true. Oh my God, I need to see that show. We have lots Catherine, of thank you so, so, so much for spending your time with us. Uh, super appreciate it. We all really appreciate it. This has, has been uh, really awesome. Thank you so much. I had a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for watching. And thanks again to Auth0 for sponsoring the show. That's auth0.com. Take care, everybody. Uh, Be safe out there.